Hi, welcome everybody to Safety on Low Energy Doors. The agenda for today is adding safety on low energy doors, why add safety, how to add safety, required components, cost savings potential, what's in it for me. Why add safety? For the end user, safety and protection. Imagine a slow-moving elderly person who is attempting to pass through an open door equipped with a low-energy door operator when all of a sudden and without warning, the door begins to close when the person is within the swing path of the door. What do you think will happen next? Why add safety? User convenience, entrapment protection, reduce liability, Energy reduction equals cost savings. How to add safety. Typical safety on a low energy door is adding a door mounted sensor on the approach or non-swing side of the door. Either a super scan or quad scan. Up here would be the door mounted sensor on the, we call the approach or non-swing side. And what you see in the red is the uh, field emitted by that particular sensor. How to add safety continued. We already know the activation method for ANSI compliance on a low energy, do low energy door must be a knowing act device, i.e. a push plate, a card reader, something of that nature. You need to coordinate the push plate function with the door mounted sensor function. In addition, a door position switch is required. This is accomplished by using a BR3. Here's a parts list of the required components. A BR3, one door mounted sensor, the length shall be the door width less one and a half inches. A Super Scan 2 works for this part number 10SS11 or II or a quad scan 10 quad scan 1 or I. One door position switch part number 10 switch 75. So these three components were needed to work together to add safety for a low energy door. BR3 function or F21 inhibitor. The BR3 function 21 provides an activation of relay one, the door control output, with an inhibitor of activation for input one, the super scan input. Input, excuse me, until input two, input three, or the wet input is triggered, the push plate inputs shall activate relay one. We'll explain a little more about this down the road. Input 4 provides a door position switch input for which closing it will re-inhibit input 1, meaning when the door gets closed and makes the door position input, the approach side super scan will then be inhibited. Adjustable H1 parameter, activation hold time of relay 1, the door control output. BR3 F21 approach sensor inhibit. Here's the scenario. Scenario one, the person manually opens the door. B, the sensor will not activate the door. And C, the sensor will not reactivate the door. So in scenario one, when you manually open the door, whether it's pushing or pulling the door, it remains as if it's a manual door forever. Scenario two, a push plate is depressed, a card reader is swiped, keypad, key code is entered, that's your knowing act, input, and then the door activates. See, the sensor, the door mounted sensor here, will reactivate the door until the door is fully closed. The sensor reactivates the door or keeps the door open until the door gets closed. Once it gets closed, 
this will be inhibited. The programmable settings on the function 21 on the BR3 is simply one setting, H1, or the hold time for relay 1, 5 seconds. If someone does not use the push plate, the door will act like a manual door, correct? An elderly person manually pushing the door could fall through if the sensor starts to activate. Function 21 protects against this. If they use the push plate, the door should act like the automatic door, a low energy door in this case, with the sensor to ensure door does not close on a person after the controller times out. So back to this elderly person, if they do not know that the door is a low energy door, if they go to push the door, and if, if you're not using the BR3, that the sensor, door mounted sensor, could uh, activate the door and that person could lose their balance because the door moved unexpectedly. F21 or function 21, the technical summary, what you see here, this wiring is exactly what's in the BR3 user's guide. For example, input 1 would be where you connect the common and normally open from your super scan to here and then input two or three can be used for a push plate activation. Input four for the door position switch, a normally open switch that closes when the door is closed. And then we have an output, relay one, which is tied directly to H1, the hold time for relay one. This output, common and normally open, would go to your door activation for your door control. And then we have power. 12 to 24 volts AC or DC. That's a range, could be 16, 18, or 20 volts. And then the parameter buttons on the BR3, like I said, the H1 is the hold time for relay one. Uh, the value is 0, 0 through 60. Relay one hold time will not begin counting down until the release of an activation input. You need to put some kind of time on H1 because in a digital world, zero is zero or nothing. It will not change. Low energy door with an electric strike. But what if your low energy door is equipped with an electric strike or mag lock? How are you going to add safety to this low energy door? How are you going to deal with the electric strike or mag lock? Enter the BR3. The BR3 can combine two functions, function 25 and function 21. <clears throat> function 25 is a sequencer to sequence an electric strike or mag lock with an automatic door opener. These two functions combine equal function 22, bad math, but the right function. The BR3 can coordinate the electric strike and or mag lock while handling the door mounted sensor function. Function 22 is a sequence with an approach sensor inhibit. Scenario 1, manual open. The sensor, door mounted sensor here, will not activate the door. The sensor will not reactivate the door. Scenario two, push plate, card reader, keypad is triggers the activation. The BR3 will release the strike or mag lock, whichever you're using. A slight delay, a programmable delay. And then D, activate the door. And then E, the sensor will reactivate the door until it is fully closed. So we press the push plate. The lock is released. A slight delay programmable by you, typically a half a second later, the door opens. Once it opens, this door-mounted sensor becomes active and can recycle, reactivate, and hold the door open. And then it will be inhibited once the door comes closed. BR3, uh, set this to function 22, the lock hold time, H1, the hold time for relay 1. In this example, we, will, we held the strike in an unlocked position, condition for three seconds. The door control hold, 
H2, hold time for relay 2 for 5 seconds. That's what we're sending to the automatic door opener or low energy door operator in this case to hold the door open for a minimum of five seconds and that's required per ANSI 156.19 and then the delay D1 a delay between the strike and the door activation in this case we set it to underscore 2 which equals 0.5 or one half of a second Function 22 technical summary, what you see here is exactly what you'll see in the BR3 user's guide. Wiring is pretty straightforward. Input 1 is for your door mounted sensor. Input 2 and 3 is for your push plate, your knowing act device, card rear, keypad. Input 4 is for the door position switch. This is all the same wiring as the function 21 as well. Relay 1, common normally open, will go to your lock device, electric strike, mag lock, and then relay 2 will go to your door control. And then we have our power, 12 to 24 volts, that's a range, AC or DC. And then the per parameter buttons, programmable buttons, which are actually right in here, INCR, increase, and then PARAM, parameter. H1, relay 1 hold time, 0 through 60, relay 1 hold time will not begin counting down until the release of input 1. H2 is relay 2 hold time, that will go to your door operator. 0 through 60, relay 2 hold time will not begin counting down until the relay between relay 1 and relay 2 expires. And then D1, the delay between relay 1 and 2, Underscore 1 is a quarter second. Underscore 2 is a half of a second. Underscore 3 equals 3 quarters of a second. And then 1 would equal 1 second and so on through 60 seconds. The delay time will begin counting down with the activation of the sequence. Potential cost savings. Let's talk cost savings for a minute. It's a fact the minimum hold open time delay per ANSI 156.19 is 5 seconds. It's much more common to hold the door open for 10, 15, or more seconds. This equates to energy loss. By using a door mounted safety sensor, we can maintain a respectable hold open time delay while keeping energy conservation in check. What's in it for me? Additional revenue and a safer door, more revenue in your pocket and in the customers due to energy conservation. Your current quote may be a low energy door operator, push plates. A new quote, low energy operator, push plates, low energy safety package. That will be those three components, the door mounted sensor, the BR3, and the door position switch. And that's it. Any questions, um, we can talk now. That's fine if you can speak. If not, uh, you're, uh, you can email the tech services group at beainc.com. So tech underscore services at beainc.com. That would go to all of us in our department. You can also uh, call us at 800-523-2468. Uh, you can call that same number for pricing, customer service, or technical support.